Howdy everybody. Today's video may have absolutely no purpose, uh, but we're going to take a little bit of a deep dive about something that I've been curious about for a while. Um, and basically that's going to be with trying to quiet down fan noise. This is the focal point of it, which is taking one of these fridge compressors and seeing if you can reduce the amount of sound it produces. This one is on a Vitrifrigo fridge. Um, so these compressors actually come attached with a four, like a four foot length of tubing and you can mount this compressor remotely. Um, as a result, we're able to play around with it a little bit. So the kind of two things I want to cover today is if there's any materials you could incorporate into your cabinet box that could make the actual cabinet that's housing your fridge make it quieter, as well as if there's anything with the design of this compressor that we can modify a little bit to make it quieter. So my main motivation for this video is actually to quiet down the blower fan on the air conditioner in our new van. In the old van, we had a similar unit. It's like a 12 volt, almost mini split that was made by Autoclima. In our current van, we're going with a cruising comfort unit, but uh, the blower motor in that when we were trying to run it at night to sleep, you know, I'm a big fan of white noise, but it was not very relaxing. It was up over 70 decibels. So my hope is that by housing this in a cabinet that's got some sound deadening uh, insulation that we can get that to a more enjoyable point. Other applications than this I think would be like perhaps water pumps. They're usually quite loud or if you've got you know some kind of shore power charger or like an inverter that's got a loud motor that bothers you this might be a good thing to try to implement into your um, enclosures and such. All right so I'm not an expert on this but there's basically two different two different ways to reduce the fan noise here. First would be by absorbing the sound. An example of this would be if you had loud neighbors, you might try to hang something on your wall that is just absorbing the noise that is coming through your wall. Um, the second kind would be to reduce the sound that is reflecting. An example of this would be if you have a room that's very echoey, you might hang some acoustic panels to uh, reduce that echo. So this second type of uh, noise reduction by re reducing the reflected sound, I think is most applicable to this because we can't just box these fans off because they obviously need to move air. They're either cooling fridge components or they're just ventilating the air in your van. But by reducing the reflected sound, hopefully we can keep that proper ventilation while still reducing the volume level. All right, so on to the actual experiment. My idea here is to take a couple of fans like this and essentially build shrouds for them uh, to enclose them in in three different ways that we'll cover. Um, and then see how different materials that line those shrouds do in terms of noise reduction. So the first material I've got is automotive insulate. I think a lot of us use this to insulate our vans, um, but this is the thinner stuff. It supposedly expands out to about a half inch thick. Um, it's SM200L, so that's the first material I'd like to test. Then maybe the next most common would be a uh, homosote. This is essentially a half inch thick product that they sell at both Lowe's and Home Depot. It's often called soundboard or a sound barrier perhaps. Um, so I'd like to see how this product does. After that we've got Noico Red which is um, a foam that essentially is used uh, for sound dampening in a lot of automotive applications. Can't remember off the top of my head what kind of foam this is, uh, but it's supposed to be quite good at it. This is the 315 mil version, so it's about uh, just under 3 eighths of an inch. Then we've got these uh, Rhino panels. These are acoustic panels. Um, you can get these on Amazon. I had bought them for a project. Don't know how much of that is marketing, but they're basically acoustic panels and we'll be testing those as well. And finally, we've got this product named Thermazite. Um, it is essentially quarter inch uh, jute carpeting with this reflective barrier. Um, it's designed to go in engine bays and such, so it's a flame proof, I think they even call it. And they call it a thermal acoustic barrier. Oddly, the uh, installation instructions say that you should glue this down 
with the shiny side to the substrate, which essentially removes any radiant, radiant uh, thermal properties. So I'm actually going to test this both ways with both the carpet facing out, which I think might do better for uh, reducing uh, sound reflection. And then with the thermal barrier out, because that is, you know, a better thermal barrier than if you're going to also use this as like a thermal insulator. All right, let's make some boxes. So I'm building these boxes out of the shittiest eighth inch, or actually I believe they call it 2.7 millimeter plywood I could find. Um, these are just going to go in the dump right after, so I'm actually just going to tape these boxes together as well with like metallic ducting tape uh, to run these experiments. So once all the boxes were built, I had seven boxes total. One was called the control, which was just the bare plywood, and then the other six were lined with the materials. My first measurement was just to place the entire box over the fan and uh, see how much noise it was producing. This was basically testing the absorption or sound absorption capability of each material. As you see, I've got a thin piece of thin slate on the workbench around the fans. I had a little bit of concern that some of the boxes weren't sitting perfectly flat, which was allowing an air gap. And I'm placing that box of screws on top just to make sure I've got consistent down pressure on each sample. After this, I went ahead and cut one side off each box, and this allowed me to make my next two measurements, which we're just going to test a little more how much uh, the different materials were reducing, how much sound was reflecting. The first measurement I took was with the cutoff side spaced away from the rest of the box. This was maybe the most applicable to what might happen in a camper van setup where you do need ventilation, but you are able to actually line all the sides around the fan. And finally, I would just take a final measurement that just had line of sight to the fan um, with, with that extra side removed. It was interesting to find out that the fans were actually louder with the line of sight measurement than no box at all. But of course, in a camper van or something, you do need some sort of enclosure for any component. All right, so let's go over the results of this pseudoscience experiment. Clearly, there's some error. Um, there's no replicates or anything, but I feel like from just some of the observations I've made, I've been able to, you know, kind of notice some trends, and it gives me a better idea, at least, of what materials I'll be using in the future. I've got three numbers that will come up on the screen as we're going over these materials. The full number is what the decibel reading was with the entire solid box over the fans. The open was with that one side cut off, but you know, spaced a little bit away from the box to kind of have some ventilation, but it's still there blocking the line of sight. And then the LOS measurement is line of sight, so that's when that side is just completely removed. I also want to state that quickly, uh, decibels are measured on an exponential or logarithmic scale. So the, you know, one, a difference of one decibel is actually about, uh, I think I read about 7% to our ears. So these changes, you know, if it's a change of five decibels, that's actually about 35% difference in noise. So these are pretty substantial savings that can be made. All right, so we're going to kind of take this from worst to best, and you can see kind of the order I've got them in. Um, about the only product I wouldn't recommend here is the Noiko. I've actually used this before, and it's specifically designed for cars, and it does say that when using it, so it's designed to be used on sheet metal, and it is supposed to be used with like a vibration decoupler. Um, but I kind of assumed that it was actually going to have some kind of benefit, but it's actually basically not any better than just using plywood and uh, adds quite a bit more cost. Uh, this was pretty disappointing. I've used this on my own cars before, and now I'm not so sure if it was actually doing anything. But that said, this was used on a wooden structure, and perhaps there's a huge difference when using it on metal. Anyways, I'm a little skeptical, and I was pretty disappointed in the results from the Noiko. After that, we've got just the full plywood. And this shows that in the full box enclosure, just using this thin, you know, less than eighth inch plywood reduced the decibel reading by eight decibels, which is a pretty substantial difference. And it does show that just having, you know, any kind of cabinet around your fridge can help. But that said, when we look at the way it reflects sound, if you've got line of sight to that fan, then the cabinet will just be reflecting the noise back at you. So not ideal, but that's just a good kind of baseline reading of what just having a plywood structure around your fan might do. Next in line would be the thermosite with the metal side facing out. 
So I've actually used this a lot before because of the radiant barrier properties of it. But if you want it to actually have any kind of positive acoustic properties, the metal needs to be facing whatever you've glued it to. And at that point, it's no longer a reflective barrier or not a surface with low emissivity. So I will continue to use this product for things like um, behind a fridge when I'm trying to make the sheet metal not radiate as much heat towards the van, um, towards the fridge from the van body. I will continue to use this product in places like that. But I had anticipated that it was a better acoustical, um, like acoustic dampener than it is. It actually just doesn't do that great. After that, if we're looking at just acoustics, I've got four products that I definitely would recommend depending on your application. First would be the Homosote. In the, just the full box test, it did the best, just a little bit better than the Rhino, but it was the best at the full box test, and it is available at your Lowe's and Home Depot, and it's quite cheap. In terms of reflective sound, it's basically the same as regular plywood. Um, so there's no, no real benefit there, but if you just had maybe a loud water pump or something else in your van that you just could just fully box off to try to reduce its sound, this would be a good product for that. After that, we've got the Rhino. This is maybe the best all around product in these results. In all three of our tests, it did the second best in them. And it was really close to the Homosote and the full closure. So those two products are the best in the full test. That said, the only reason I recommend this less is because it's kind of a pain to work with. I can only find this in 12 by 16 inch squares. And in a van application, often you need bigger dimensions than that. Um, and there are some knockoff versions of this or off-branded versions of this that do come in different sizes, but I can't speak if they have the same, you know, impressive qualities in terms of acoustics. And finally, there's Thermazite with the jute facing out and Thin Slate. Both these products were great all-arounders, and in terms of installing them, they're, they come in a roll. You can cut them to any shape you want, and you can easily install them with the spray adhesive. Um, the Thermazite is pretty expensive, but I think off these results, if you don't care about the reflective thermal properties, you could probably just get like a higher quality jute carpeting in you know quarter inch or three eighths inch. And it would probably have about the same characteristics, but be probably a third of the price. And as for the thin slate, um, if you've got room in your cabinet, you could even try getting the SM400L or the SM600L, which are thicker. So it would probably have even better uh, acoustic properties. This is also has some thermal properties, even though it is quite thin. So I think for me personally, down the line, I'll probably just stick to the thin slate. But I think between jute carpeting, thin slate, and if you just have a kind of a specific product where you really want to just um, absorb sound, I think the Homosote and the Rhino panels are all a great way to go. So to sum up, here's all the results. And here they are just showing the net change in decibels. And that's about it. Thanks, guys. Well, if you're still listening, you may have noticed at the start of this video, I mentioned a little bit about compressor design. And I did actually end up doing a little bit of work on that, but it didn't work. So I'll leave that little bit of that footage here so you can kind of perhaps just you know food for thought in terms of fan placement and such like that thanks guys all right but before we get into the main experiment i would just like to take a little bit of a detour to actually talk about fan placement and the fact that having something in proximity to the fan blades can actually really change the amount of noise it's making um and as we'll quickly talk about the fridge compressor design in a minute, this seems kind of like a poor design on the fridge companies. So let's just watch this, all right? Uh, we're gonna take a hand and we're gonna first put it on the exhaust side of the fan after the readings have stabilized. And now let's put it on the intake side.
All right, so that was a difference of about five decibels up and down, um, which is quite substantial. So now, so now if we come over to this fridge compressor, this is um, a Vitri Frigo unit that's got one of these remote compressors. Um, it's actually attached with like about a four foot uh, tube to the fridge body. It makes mounting them way more of a pain in the butt, but it makes your fridge feel quite a bit bigger. But if you notice, this fan has the intake side really close to these cooling fins. I'm guessing this was a design choice so that it basically guarantees that there's more air flowing actually onto the compressor. Um, but to me, I feel like when these things overheat, I don't think it's usually the fan, it's the cabinet that they've been placed in. There's just not enough ventilation and the whole cabinet just gets too hot. So to me, I feel like this fan, perhaps if it was just mounted on the other side of these cooling fins, might actually reduce our noise alone just there. And as long as the cabinet is built properly, I still think the compressor would um, cool well enough. And we're gonna see if there's any truth there. So I've unplugged the fan from the main kind of control module there. And let's see if we can get this um, fan to run and get a before and after measurement. Okay. So that's pretty damn quiet right there. Um, which, these fridges are not loud, and unless you're sensitive to sound, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Let's see, maybe we'll try to place it in a more neutral location, maybe like right there. So about 41, 49.4, 49.5, all right, let's, um, let's swap the size of this fan. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt because these uh, screws are probably clearly installed before this copper tubing has been run. Um, so a little bit in the way, but let's give it a shot. All right, so we've got the thing plugged back in. And now let's see what she does. Well, I'll be damned. It's uh, about a half decibel louder. So I'll reverse it and see if that stays consistent. All right, fans back to the original position and yep, not the result I expected. <laughs> 